Hello and welcome to another edition of Ambient Talkie, a show where we dive into the weird and wacky equipment and wonderful, call it whatever you want, music. I'm Andy from Two Round Robins and I hope you're ready for some exploration on the organelle. Now, if you remember, I did an quite a freeform episode uh, last year or for Christmas last year, where I basically just, you know, um, fumbled my way around Flora, which is a great script that I will have to touch upon somewhere in the future. So uh, I thought that was quite fun. Let's try to do something similar today here with Organelle. So the history with me and Organelle is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, when I got it, I absolutely loved it. I, I did a few things on it, but then kind of soon realized that, you know, I was mostly using it for my own samples or for a bit of sample playback or let's say more audio mangling stuff and stuff like that. So I didn't really explore a lot of what patches uh, the organelle uses as synths and synthesizers and stuff like that. So at the beginning, what I did was I basically just um, went on patch storage, got myself loads of patches and then organized them as the OCD on my brain likes to do. So I organized them quite a lot here and you can do this through the browser uh, quite easily, although it's a bit clanky at points, uh, you can, you know, quite easily subdivide them in like subfolders and basically stuff like that. So what I think, uh, what I uh, think to do today is basically I kind of forgot a lot about what the synth patches do, how they sound and, you know, what use cases I can make for them. So what I thought would be fun is what if we like what if you guys um, join me in trying to explore a bit of the synth patches that I basically put on Organelle like six months ago and completely forgot what they do, how they sound. So again, this is going to be probably a pretty uh, freeform episode. It's going to go left and right, um, center and end or whatever. It's going to be all over the place. So bear with me, but hopefully it's got to it's gonna be fun. So let's just, for example, try with synths. So this is my folder that contains a bit of subfolders with different synths. So I kind of categorize them in arpeggiators, uh, chord sequencers, drums, lo-fi type stuff, uh, some stuff that sounds a bit organic, although this is mostly, I think, just sample-based stuff. And then we have like synths, which is basically just your know, synthesis, normal synths that I didn't know how else to get, categorize them. And then you have your toys, uh, which I categorized as something that sounds a bit like toy-like. So maybe uh, some lovely toy synths and stuff like that, but we'll see. So let's just start on ARPs and here we can see that we have a few of these. Um, and I think I remember Arpeggio Scent. And... Yeah, this is really slow. So one one interesting thing is that whenever I loaded up the Scent or, you know, a patch on um, that I took from patch storage, you can see the BPM here is quite low. So again, this is by default, it kind of puts it to 20 as the minimum. And then you have to kind of turn the knob in order for it to um, to really get into some territory that's far more manageable. So let's say let's let's be basic and let's just put this on 120 BPM. So um, there we go. And you know it sounds quite lovely. We can also change how the octaves go. the decay and the tone. And of course, there's a cool thing with um, organelle and patches 
that you have your aux key or aux button here and you can have a few other stuff. So how these goes are is usually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have like this ten things here. So uh, I guess latch would then be this one. Yeah, there we go, latch on. And this will just latch. So it's quite lovely. And of course, just a little side quest here, you also have like, you can record a sequence. So if I press two, it's gonna record Armit and then I can. And then like, you can do so much, but whatever, this is a uh, quite a bad sequence. But a cool thing that you can do is basically you can overdub it with this one, I think, and then you can... So you can basically also record little automations regarding the knobs, and this can be quite fun and quite great when you just want to play around. Like I said, this is my favorite couch type scent because you know it's battery powered i can take it on a couch and just do whatever so yeah let's just move on let's just see what else we can get through this we have genny which is like cranny but without the r and this is another of these arpeggios oh we can latch it on And it's a bit more randomish now. Maybe it's because it's generative, or like it kind of randomly goes. And it sounds quite lovely. I mean, the synth engine is the same as I believe. It's just the other way how to how it actually just jumps from one to the other. All right. Do we have anything else? What's a partial party? It's like a party, but, you know, you're partially there, so you're not really listening to anyone. Or you're just a guy that's, you know, standing in the corner, uh, saying to himself, you know, they don't know that I own an organelle or something like that, and I am not getting anything. So this probably was a bad idea to go... To, well, aha, this is probably a partial party because partially there's no sound or something like that. Okay, so this is something that I have to look into. So try to ignore this one. I'll let's just move on. Pink mode, okay. Uh-huh, okay, this is one of those sequencers that basically, oh, come on. Uh, that basically you have to uh, choose and then just add a note or change it as you go along. And then you can va velocity, uh -huh. velocity for each, I assume, or not. Oh, and you can transpose it as well. Oh, but you could transpose globally. Okay, I got it. Okay, it, it, it is what it is. It certainly lacks the pink appeal. Uh, and then we have punchy, which you, I assume you just punch it. Yay. That's quite lovely. I think I remember using this on the demo that I did for Organelle at the beginning. And I think I remember quite enjoying. Uh -huh, and you have the same thing here, yeah. You have like latch here. So it's basically the same synth engine, but you know, uh, Organelle does have a MIDI out, so I assume that you can basically plug it into some other uh, synth engine or something like that, that would be great. And then just let's, let's just try Stereo Rhythmicon, um, whatever this is. Okay, there is something. So again, these are patches that I'm that I don't really remember. Uh -huh. Okay, it is stereo and it's very rhythmic, rhythmical. 
It's actually, it probably could be good. I don't know, let's just try to... Uh, because it does sound kind of lovely, and then if we, if we add the brightness a bit down, this can be, like, this could be used. You know, re imagine if we record this and then just slow it down, really. It could be quite lovely ambiental stuff, I assume. All right, so we got a few of these arpeggios. Now, I remember really enjoying some of these. Um, and uh, some of these, like uh, those partial party, <laughs> is something that I have to look into in order to see. But yeah, so again, one of the bad things about Organelle is basically when you try to go back into the menu, as you can see, it just kind of goes back here and then you have to readjust stuff. Okay, let's go to chord, and I think I have... Okay, let's just try chordy, so that's like corky, which is pixie, so say hi to pixie, and, and but it's like for chords. Okay. Okay, so that, I'm assuming this is a sequencer, and then you have the roll rate. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I understand this. I, I think I remember. You basically have your chord one, which is, I don't know, gonna be a, a uh, m let's say a major, because we like majors, and then we have a minor. And then if I go here, we have diminished seventh, and if I go here, we gonna have another major. Okay, so I assume then if I go to play, which is gonna be this one, uh -huh, and then it just kind of jumps. So yeah, this is again a use case that I'm probably not going to use that much. But, you know, if I would actually take some time and not be a dick about it, I probably would go more into it just to see what else I can do. So yeah, let's just forget about chords for now. And let's go to drums. So we have drummy. So that's like chompy, but with drums. Yeah. Okay, so imagine if you're David Guetta or some other um, well-known DJ, which I'm struggling to think of right now. And you really want to make, you know, your party cheesy as hell. You can do this and just be like, oh man, it's 70s, but you know, you like it. And you know, somebody has a quite a lot of amount of coke in the bathroom, but forget I said that. So yeah, this is just lovely, uh, lovely drum stuff. Uh, lovely drum stuff right here. And of course you can probably sequence it, right? Yeah, yeah, you can sequence it. So you have like record. So if I go here and go, and then just put the delay time. Yeah, you know, it it sounds all right, I guess. It's it's fine, it's okay. Okay, and then we have Jade Delicious, and I've, I absolutely love this one. Uh, this is sample based, I think, but it's basically like Jade Dilla. So, so, you know, if you don't have money, to buy the new thing from the Teenage Engineering and you really want to make those hip-hop beats and you spend a bit more on organelle, which is very uh, weird, but, you know, you can, you can play with J. Dilla. So yeah, you can also, um, oh yeah, you can record it. And then you can use the low fire so you can get really nice lovely vin vinyl, uh, vinyl sounds. So I love this one because it just like it's so right. So the samples are pretty nice. Then you have like all the cool lo-fi study beats to type of music, but it's like you're using an organelle for it. So yeah, that's fun. So I think this one's quite alright. I love this one. And then you have 
Oh, I, I remember. Organism. This is a great one. This is such a complex um, patch. So I'll have to credit this one as well. So let's, let's just, for example, this is generative. So you just put a tempo and then you could just go how much of the heart, how much of the pedal you want and how much of the limbs you want. And then you can, for the heart, you can just do like... So this is kick drums in a way, a bit of a kick drum vibes. And then you have pedal, which I'm assuming is just snare. Yeah, and then you have like really lovely stuff here. Like percussive sounds, all that mumbo jumbo, which everybody loves. So yeah, this is a cool, this is a cool one that you can try. And I remember, I think I had like this one as well in the... Um, Oh, Pocket Lo-Fi, random. I, I, I don't know if I remember this one. Oh yeah, I hate this. I, I hate the sequences that are... Uh, the sequencers on Organelle that are like this, for me, are just bad. Why? Because you have to change the divisions here a, a bit weirder, but like 16 is like a whole note, and then if you want 16s, you can do this. So, you can hear. But like if I want an 8 I'll, or a 4 and I, if I want a 4, if I want a 4, I'll go. Yeah, this is a 4 and then a whole step is this. So it's like my brain is very, very dumb. So it, it, the complexities of this is, is just not something that really defines me in a way. So, uh, you know, if you like this, Man, all the power to you. I think you're great, but like um, for me, they're just they just don't work this much. I I I I think like Organelle has a few of these around. And now let's go to lo-fi stuff. So Bly's, uh, is this like Bly's little uh, pentagramophone? Yeah, I love this. Bly's Bly's a cool dude. Uh, it just is so like. I love this. It's like a bit generative, but it sounds so lovely. And then you can have your drones or not. And you can basically octave the little glides and a bit of tremolo. And then you have your chords. So this is weird because, oh, this is basically the race that's, that's based on BPM, okay? But I'll, we like sine waves because we're basic. So you can do quite a lot and then you can add a filter. And a bit of distortion if you really want to. But again, this is like this is such a cute little generative synth thing. And I absolutely love it. And then you have like this I love you thing. Okay. Hi Bly here. Bless you. May your heart be light. Love returns us to the origin. Ah, oh, thanks, Bly. This is a lovely script. I, I, I absolutely love this one. Well, not a script, it's a patch, but you know, you get the idea. So that's a really nice one. Um, and then if we go, oh, dust. I remember this. This is, this is a lovely one. So you have your synth, you have your noise thing, your wobbliness, and I don't know this, I think uh, these two are for the wobbliness. Uh-huh, octave jumps. So imagine if you, you know, you're scoring the remake of Castlevania, but like the director goes, yeah, just make it lo-fi, and then you just... So that's, that's amazing. I love this, but I think I use this mostly as a processor for like internal sounds. So uh, also a thing that I should notice here, the, the camera battery is gonna die, so I'll have to change it before we lose everything, so bear with me. Okay, 
so we're back. Let's just go to fun effects. Well, these really are fun effects. Um, oh, you have your boing. You can, ch you can basically change any effect here. So you have your boing here. Which is a thing that exists. And then you have your bounce here. Oh. oh. oh is this the bounce? Oh, so this is the third one. Yeah, okay. So it goes chromatically. So you have fun effects also here, like phones, which are always fun. And, and then you have the bird here. Okay, so this is something that you would use, um, I don't know. Uh, you know, my, my brain cannot think of a funny pun where you can use fun effects, but I'm sure there is one. Uh, moving onwards, lo-fi piano. This is, again, I think it's sample based, so it's not really a synth, no? And I think you can change the octave and pitch. So, if you want to do those lovely lo-fi jazzy type stuff on YouTube, you can. Just get an organelle and this patch and you're done for it. Uh, moving on, oh, we have something similar, like there's Tape Synth Plus Plus and Tape Synth 2, and I think there's a... So, as I understand it, this is just basically... Algorithmically, it kind of feels the sample is being played on a cassette. And with aux, you can change. Yeah. Ah, that's nice. All right. So, you know, I think tape plus plus is similar, but it's categorized a bit differently. I think tape uh, send two is the way to go if you really want to do it. Although you have like, a, you have different effects that you can add. Like delays. I think they just took the library from um, from Critter and Guitar's effect pack that you can cram into PD and are using it here, which is great. You can do that because it's open source and it's awesome. So yeah, so again, that was the lo-fi thing and now we go to organic, which again, I think cinematic piano is probably one of my most played patches. Just because it just sounds very lovely. So I wouldn't really call this a synth, but it's something that you can try. And then you have flute, which would vibrato on the aux key. It only has like the first and the second, right? So you have. You... So yeah, it's nice. It's fine. And then you have your Mellotron, which is again, I think this is for the MK. I don't know. I think these is again. This is sample based, but it does have like a lovely sound, and you do have a interface that that works pretty fine. So you can change the samples like based on the envelope which it has and all that lovely stuff. And I think this is basically like a Mellotron type thing. So for those, for those Zoomies that are watching this, um, for if you don't know what a Mellotron is, you're in luck because not a lot of people do, but it's basically one of the first uh, type 
uh, samplers, let's say, for example, you would have tapes and it would play the tapes that were on the sampler, which was called a Mellotron, and it's very old and it's very vintagey. And people used to love that stuff, and Sig Ross probably uses it, you know? Like, if, have you ever heard about uh, Oasis? They have it, a lot of it, because it sounds very Beatlesque and they like to steal. But anyways, yeah. So, um... This is a cool little patch, and then if you want to go back, which obviously you can with this, because this is basically used to uh, to change the uh, sound, um, what you can do is basically go back to the root. So back to the roots. And then we have Pacifica, which is again, it's a bit like a uh, Congo type thing. Well, no, no, is it Congo or is it just like vibraphone? Yeah, I, I was thinking of Conga stuff. This is what I said, Congo, but Congo's a country. Yeah. And then you have this. So, imagine if you're scoring a noir... Um, a noir detective drama, and then somebody walks into, the, into your office, and it's like... Uh, yeah, that was shit, but, you know... It's 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 all that lovely jazz, um, all that lovely, you know. Uh, uh, what's the word? Is it smooth jazz? The one that sounds like an elevator? Yeah, it's smooth jazz. And the, the I, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, the guy with a little saxophone that they used to, um, you know, d do stuff on it, and it was very popular. So yeah, you have organic, and then we go basically to the synth. 